and we'll admit, now you can see our, our colors are now in place, a little bit cleaner, easier to see. But notice when I selected the threshold setting, it allows the users to set whatever thresholds they want to be able to set to change. So for a what if situation, and uh, you can then change your colors accordingly. And see, see on a what if situation, you know, where how how your your information changes. Like I said, we have the tooltip, which shows the pop up based on we we see the state, we see the revenue dollars. So I'm going to edit that back and put it just to the percentile quartiles, so we get it to uh, what we're doing. Notice when I did, I originally had this set at percentile binning, but because I changed this to allow for the thresholds, it automatically switched it back, switched it to uh, values. So we'll come back here. I'm going to reset my colors. Get something with a little differentiation there. So now I've got the quartile set. You can see the differences here. Now I want to add an additional uh, format. So I'm going to say let's we can add um, the bar bar graph, and I'm going to include it within the state. So here I'm going to select my number of products. Notice my name automatically changes here, as well as my toolbar, my tooltip also changes to select the products. And this one's taken some time to come back. Let's see if we can help this along. Okay, let me uh, get our map view back in here. There it is. So I'll quickly get uh, get the map back to where we we had it. I got my binning, put by three. Change my colors. Click OK on that. We'll add our bar graph again. Put our products in. Want it to be I want our bars to be based on brand. Click OK. And so now you see we've got the two formats. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. So you can use the slider or you have your zoom in, zoom out features. So I'll blow this back up a little bit more. So we can decrease. And that should give us a little bit better view of it. So that's similar to what we, we had. 
Now some of the properties that you have available, you have the canvas so you can change the size, a couple of defaults or you can customize it. You have your tool action so you can turn on or off whatever you, you want to see. You have integrate, uh, interaction that you can set up and you can change your labels as well. So once we do that, we pretty much have our, our map report done. So I go ahead and, and uh, click on done here. That will put us back into the compound layout. It takes a little bit for the maps to show up. There they are. And I can get rid of my tabular view. I can save this. And basically, if I went back to my dashboards, I'd then be able to include this one instead of the one I had pre had previously. So here, this one's map one. And as Christian pointed out, the drop down to edit your dash is up in the upper right. So I can edit a dashboard here. And you can take out the old one. I can add in the one that we just created. Just drag it over, drop it into place, save it, click on run, and our new one shows up into place then. It's very similar, but you notice the color differences um, that we have put in place so you can actually see it as well as the name change. So very simply, uh, you're able to leverage the map views. Uh, build very nice uh, geographical representations of your data to make a a leverage your data a lot more effectively. Um, works with standard in a, uh, dashboard prompts. So if I select just a year, I can apply it. And your map data will reflect accordingly. So you can see we've got the tool, tool tips for the revenue as well as we have tool tips for the bar graphs on top of each state. And I think we're getting close to, to our time. I um, wanted to leave time for any questions. I uh, wanted to quickly just show you some of the action framework. This is a sample report I put together where if you click on the credit, you basically have three options. You can either navigate, process the credit rating, navigate to, uh, I added a second one to show that the filtering actually does work. But if you click on it, you basically get that integration. You set up what uh, your customer that you want to process. And basically, it sends it to an, uh, an action, which is a web service, quickly showing you behind the scenes what that's actually doing and how easy it is to set that up. If you have web services available to you, so I'm just going to edit this. So we won't go through and recreate it, but the same scenarios, you know, building your analysis up front on the criteria tab. You see, we just add our columns, add any filters. I'm just using a tabular view. The key behind it is I set up my, uh, my action based on the credit rating. So I went into the column properties and went over to interaction. Before, if you were familiar with, with uh, 10G's uh, column information, 
This was part of the column format where you could select the navigation, things like that. Now everything's referred to as an action link. You still have your drill. Uh, you can turn it off. You can set up your master detail events. In this case, we're working with the action links. So very easily, I can change it around. I can edit these. So I can change where I'm going to. So I've got my options here. I can set up conditional uh, links as well. But when you add in a new one, let me go ahead and uh, cancel this one. And if I wanted to create a new one, so I can put in my text that I want, new process. I can click on this. You see you have the option of doing the navigation. Uh, Action Framework also replaces guided navigation. So you can add, navigate to BI content, which would be something, a dashboard or another analysis, uh, an, a web page URL. You can go e-business suite. You also have your web services or a Java method. Pretty much anything you can put together, you'd be able to navigate to. So it really allows your data to be leveraged both back and forth and be a lot more useful to your overall business. So here we can select a web service, which is a process that I set up. And I can go into my sample web services that I did, drill down to get to it. There's my process. Click on it. A little bit of customizations. You can your prompt. So I'm going to change this to name. And I can change my type. It could be either a coded value or a column value. If I select column value, it lets me select the columns. So here's my customer name. And you have other options as well as fixed or hidden. And I can click OK. OK again. And it basically adds a new navigation process, which is a web service, into my report. And that's really a simple it, um, in setting up navigation and using Action Framework. So, of course, it expects you to have some of those processes pre-built if you're going to leverage those. But if you're going to use it just from a simple navigation standpoint, then um, it works very, very similar to, to 10G, just the naming and some of the screens are a bit different.